How's it going everybody? Ed Ricker here and I do a bunch of video reviews of cameras and drones and I talk about all this stuff but probably the number one question I get in the comments is how I edit and what I use to edit. I also want to credit Russell and Jim for being the straws that kind of broke the camel's back in terms of having me kind of get around to making this video finally. So what we're going to do is act like we just got done flying. We're gonna take the footage out of our drone SD card and then start the video editing process and then spit out a quick little simple export so I can show you my process for doing things with Premiere, Adobe Premiere on a PC. So here we go. By the way, if you see me wearing this glove, it's actually to help me use the Wacom tablet here. It uh, reduces friction as I'm moving the pen around. So that answers that question. Um, so here is my card reader, it's the Exelon USB 3.0 card reader. Sorry for giving you the finger. Um, so I'm going to put the little micro SD card in right there. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, so we already have our window up here. Came up automatically, showing as Drive L. In this SD card, we will see the DCIM, then the 100 media here. And we're not going to probably use all these clips, but I am going to just transfer them over for you now. And I'm going to put them into one of my folders. I think I have it labeled February 9th videos. That's when I'm actually making this video today. So February 9th videos, we're going to drop it right in there. Now if you have a pretty fast micro SD card and a pretty fast card reader, this shouldn't take very long. Um, this whole folder looks like it was uh, 3 gigabytes, so pretty small in comparison to what this could be. Once this is done, I'll show you a trick. What is the trick, you say? Well, it's just backing up that same footage. So I'm going to totally drop this into another hard drive just as a backup. We want to make sure that we back things up every single time. We don't want to lose footage. We want to make sure we have multiple copies. So I now have the footage on two hard drives. We're going to access it from our faster hard drive. I actually have a RAID 0, which is essentially three hard drives stacked up on top of each other, all spinning at the same time and reading as one media source on my computer. It's pretty cool. So when I go into Windows Explorer, Media M here is actually three hard drives showing as one drive here, the media interior. I did that because I wanted to have a lot of speed reading uh, 4K footage. Now I'm going to rename DCIM to something a little more memorable. So we're going to go Feb 9. Um, 2016 or 17 rather, drones. Drone footage, how about that? Okay, so we have it here, we have it on our backup drive as well, we have it in two places, very important. So now I'm going to open up Premiere. I have the shortcut down here in my taskbar. Premiere Pro CC 2017 release. All right, new project. Gonna go to new project, call this Feb 9, 2006, 17. I keep saying that, drone. Now, just the way that I have things set up, I am actually saving my projects on another hard drive. Um, actually, it's a solid state drive, but we're going to call this drone footage. You can um, save it wherever you need to if you only have one or two hard drives, but I have a ton of hard drives to access from. Also, if you go into scratch disks, um, you can set these to somewhere other than what is uh, the default path. This is going to help your computer read through the hard drives a little quicker when you're re-accessing data from the audio and video files that you're going to be importing. Um, not a big deal if you don't do a whole lot of video editing, but for me, I've actually made the path go to a specific place on the scratch export drive, my S drive here, into a specifically created folder called Adobe Media Cache. So I'll be saving this in S drive. I'll be reading from the M drive, and my backup is on the B drive. By the way, Premiere Pro is running off of my C drive, as well as my OS, which is my operating system. So we're in our little uh, ingest window here, project, import media to start, double click there, and media, 2017, February 19th, there we go, there's our footage import folder. So I'm importing the entire folder. You can kind of see how quickly my mouse is moving, and that's because it's not a mouse. <laughs> it's this. This is so much more ergonomic for your wrist and for everything. Um, it saves your wrist from wear and tear if you're doing this all day. No more carpal tunnel. This is so much quicker. And one of these buttons for your thumb actually controls double click. So double click is so much easier. Now, I'm going to uh, make the workspaces look a little more like maybe yours would look 
if we were editing on a computer that didn't have two monitors. If you do have two monitors, good for you. But uh, for now, we'll just use this one. So we have our footage here. We're going to click, double click on one of these and see just what it is. Now I remember this one. I, I don't think I'm a fan of this particular clip. I don't really do anything special. But in a couple clips down, there is a pretty cool clip that I've been closing out most of my videos with. And it was um, the clip of me uh, taking the drone down this sidewalk. This one, yeah. So it's shot in full 4K. So I just go back and forth a few times with the drone trying to get that perfect shot. So basically we're scrubbing back and forth with our mouse here, figure out what part of that clip we actually want to use. So as we play, we can kind of figure that out. If we go back right here when we're in the shade, what we're gonna do is hit this button. This is our in, our mark in, and you see how this all of a sudden becomes shaded and this is not shaded. So we're indicating that we're using just this portion of the clip. And then we'll play, we'll pass by the lamp post and hit spacebar to stop and then hit this one, which is mark out. You see also that you can do I and O on the keyboard as shortcuts. Now we have it here. What we can do simply, we can either drag from here, this little um, film uh, icon, or we can just drag directly from the window here, which is our source window, directly to where we have a timeline. It says no sequences. That's fine. It'll create a sequence that is designed to handle that clip. So in this case, it created a sequence that was 24 frames per second and 4096 by 2160 pixels for a true 4K image um, that fits that sequence perfectly. So now we can play our sequence and our sequence looks just like we saw in our source window. Uh, let's find something really nice here. That looks a little dark to me. I'm in that shot, but I think part of that shot is good. If we um, scoot around in it a little bit Eventually I get the drone where I want and I, I kind of fly through this little arch here. I'm going to hit mark in or I on the keyboard, spacebar, and play it for about four seconds. I, I do see the drone shadow, which I'm not really a fan of, but um, anyway, I'm going to stop there and mark out. Okay, I'm going to drag that down as well. So we have two clips in our timeline, the sidewalk and the arches. I'm going to do one more clip here. Let's do the one where we're kind of flying through the arbor. Um, let's do this one. And here I think I kind of um, fiddle with the drone a little bit, trying to get the best shot. We're going to do uh, uh, mark I right there, fly through, and then as soon as we get to about the bench, I'm going to hit the O on the keyboard. So now we have three clips in our sequence. So we have the sidewalk, we have moving through the arches, and we also have flying through the, um, the arbor. Now, I am gonna doctor this up because I don't like seeing the shadow of the drone. So what I'm gonna do is highlight the clip here. So now we are accessing that particular clip. Go up here to effects. You'll also notice that my computer autosaved now. I have an autosave every five minutes because I don't want to lose any of my work. So it just does that automatically. It's actually a really good feature. So now that we're in the effects window of DJI underscore 0346, you see over here in motion. Um, this is something that I, I use quite a bit, this motion panel here. Um, it's an effects control and then motion. So you can actually hit this little stopwatch and it says toggle animation. So we just turned it on. And over here it created a keyframe. This keyframe is just this little dot. It's indicating a place in time along the length of the clip. So if we put that keyframe all the way at the beginning of the clip in this window, not this window, but this one, and then we scrub over there, we see that we are at the very beginning of this. Now, as we play the video here, as soon as we see that, that issue with the drone uh, shadow, we're going to highlight that clip we're going to hit position on the stopwatch as well. Drag that over there. Keep our playhead where it's at though. And then we're going to create two more keyframes by clicking on these two dots in between the arrows of position and scale. Now we're going to scale up to 110. Let's do that. Now you see we actually got rid of our drone. There's no more drone shadow. That's a good thing. But we're also going to move the clip a little bit to the right. 
So we're going to use the x-axis, which is in the 2000s here. I'm going to move that a little to the right. And so now, if you were to watch this, we're actually going to move it up here too. Delete our first two keyframes. Now you see that as we play this, we're not going to see that drone shadow because we've cropped in and we moved to the right. There is a little drone shadow on that post. So we could, if we wanted to, make the image go even further to the right and we would get even less of that post drone shadow. I mean, that's barely noticeable. No one's going to necessarily notice that. And if they do, hey, they're being picky. The reason why we can move it left and right through space is because we've cropped in 10%. So we have a little bit of uh, leeway on the left and the right to play with. So we're going to go uh, to window up here and workspaces and we're going to go to effects. So now that we're in the effects window, we have access to this area. This is going to show us where all of our effects are. I'm going to get into transitions, go to dissolve and cross dissolve. Cross dissolve will allow us to kind of make a nice little crossfade between uh, two different clips. There we go. Pretty cool. And then this one, pretty cool. Now I'm also going to adjust the brightness on this one because it's a little bright for my taste. So I'm going to go to window, lumetri color. Now we have our lumetri um, options here. I'm going to do exposure minus 0.5. It's going to darken it up a little bit. Bring up our highlights back, maybe just a, a hair so we can get that brightness. Because uh, I don't want it to look dark. I just want it to you know, maybe look a little bit darker than it was. So that looks pretty good to me. Um, this starts out okay, but then it ends a lot darker. So I am going to probably add a little to the exposure, maybe a 0.2, uh, maybe a point, point 0.3. How about that? Yeah. And then this, I'm going to actually bring down the highlights because we have a lot of contrast between the darkness here and the, the brightness of the posts. I'm also going to bring up our shadows just a little bit so we can see a little more detail of the ground. Uh, maybe too much on the shadows. There we go. That looks really cool. So you can already kind of tell that footage that has been shot well from the camera settings point of view and the drone settings point of view is going to also be a lot easier to correct in post-production. Um, I'm doing this pretty quickly, but honestly, I probably wouldn't touch very much of this. It looks good to me. And if I were to go back to our first clip and then uh, make it full screen and play, I really like the look of that. I mean, that, that looks nice to me. I could probably spend a little more time on the fades to make sure that they were exactly where I want them to be. But um, that's, a, that's a pretty good image. And then at the end, I'm probably just going to fade out. So fade out to black. So black, if you go to effects, and then you can go to, I actually have it in my frequent folder here, dip to black to end it, and dip to black to start it. So it's dipping from black, and then it's dipping to black at the end. There we go. So. Pretty simple, didn't add any LUTs or anything. I don't really plan to with this particular footage. Um, now I'm also gonna add a little bit of music because that was someone's uh, request to make sure that they knew how to add music. So I'm gonna go back into my browser here. Now I'm switching back and forth between workspaces because normally I have one big work workspace across monitors, but my screen recording software can only record one monitor at a time. So I'm kind of having to finagle this a little bit. So we're gonna go workspaces and we're gonna go back to all panels, the way I had it set at uh, a little while ago. I have my project window back here, double click inside of that area, and we're going to find some music. We're gonna go to G Drive this time. We haven't been to G Drive yet, but I do have my copyright free music in here, as well as some other types of music as well. Copyright free, uh, let's go to good royalty free music, and this is all royalty free stuff I got from uh, when I got DaVinci Resolve. And let's see, I don't really know what's good in there, so I'm just gonna import the entire folder. I've already used this particular um, clip for, I think, my, my rescue mission video with the DJI Mavic Pro when I had the fight with the teddy bear. But um, I'm just going to add it in there, play it, and see what happens.
so now I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut C to get into the um, little razor blade tool. And because I have S on the keyboard also enacted, we have the snap tool, which is right here. It's, it's, it's on snap. So with S on and then C on, I'm going to press right there to cut off the rest of the clip. And then we're going to go back to our window, which is going to be effects. I'm going to find the exponential fade. So it's going to fade at the beginning and at the end. For a smooth fade in and a smooth fade out. At this point, press Control and S so you save your project. You don't want to uh, make this crash on you at any point and lose what you've done. At this point, we have three clips on. We've done a couple crossfades, fade in from black, fade out to black, added music and a crossfade at the beginning and the end of the audio track as well. Uh, we have our sequence all ready to export. Um, so in Premiere here, we want to make sure that here at the top of the timeline, our little start and end points are at the, the beginning and the end of our footage. See how it snaps like that? Want to make sure that with the snap tool on, which is right here, we have this all the way at the beginning and this all the way at the end of the part that we've edited and we want to actually export out. We're going to go to File, Export, Media. And I hope I'm not going too quickly, but I don't want this video to last forever either. Um, so Export Settings Format, H264. Now let's just assume we're uploading to YouTube. That's what I've been doing and that's kind of the, um, the whole process that I think you guys are looking uh, to, to have me uh, show you. So H264 is the format. Uh, which is also what you can call the codec. We're going to go all the way down in our preset menu and lo and behold we have Vimeo, Twitter, but we also have our YouTube. So since we are using a 4K video, uh, video timeline with the clips that are 4K, we use YouTube 2160p 4K. Now you see that this change in our output summary is 3840 by 2160. Now at the beginning of this video I, sh I told you that the clips that we're using are 4096 by 2160. So YouTube actually cannot display anything currently wider than 3840 by 2160. So even though we shot 4096 it's going to scale it down to 3840 so we're going to get a slight little black um, letterbox band at the top and the bottom of our video. Not a big deal, it's just what's going to happen. Uh, also make sure that our output frame rate is the same, 23.976 frames per second. Um, that's really what the video was shot at, even though I say 24, it really was 23.976. Down, we're going to do use maximum render quality. You want to make sure our maximum render quality is as good as it can be. We're also going to render at maximum depth, so that our bit depth is going to be as as depthy as it can be for YouTube, even though YouTube kind of compresses it anyway. All right, now, can't forget the output name. For YouTube, it's actually pretty important for you to make sure that your output name contains some of the keywords that you want people to use when they're searching. Don't just name it any old thing. Actually name it something that you think people might search for because YouTube's algorithm for finding things and for search results actually is slightly dependent on the file name. So we're going to do Ed Ricker vlogs, um, DJI Mavic Pro, uh, Arbor, fly through, can't type, 4K footage demonstration. There we go. Now if someone searches my name, searches the drone, searches 4K footage, 4K demonstration, um, anything like that, they're going to uh, possibly stumble on my footage. I'm going to save it. It's going to give us an estimated file size of 113 megabytes. That's fine. I'm going to hit export. We're not going to touch anything else here, but we do want to also make sure that we are exporting both video and audio. Export out. We're going to let this run for just a second. Looks like it's going to take about a minute and uh, 20 seconds. So there we go. Ed Ricker Vlogs, DJI Mavic Pro, Arbor Fly 3 4K footage demonstration. Double click that and we should have our clip. We're just going to maximize it there and watch our beautiful work. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh! Wow! Oh, Jesus. Okay, and it fades out. So, there we go. Pretty simple. Nothing too extreme here. It's not going to be that type of video, you know. 
more of a basic level, how to import, ingest, export. So hopefully you guys can uh, take some of that information who are just getting started with Premiere or just getting started with Mavic Pro footage or just getting started with 4K footage in general. And uh, perhaps this will help you out. All right guys, thanks so much for watching. And uh, if you liked the video, subscribe because I'm making videos like this all the time. And until next time, happy editing. Mm -hmm.